I don't think he did a black and nerdy version no, of this No, but he should. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a funny video, too, because he's got Key and Peele in it and a couple of other, uh, I think, uh, is Donny Osmond in at the end of that one, too, I, I think? You're gonna, you're gonna, is, that, is that right? I don't know. I think know. that's right. <laughs> Aunt would not know. Yeah. <laughs> I think Glenn is the true nerd here in this uh, <laughs> in this group. We wanted to uh, uh, continue our conversation with Ann Thornton. He's uh, the lieutenant governor candidate on the Republican ticket, running with uh, Mark Ronchetti uh, in the November general election. And uh, we've got our next guest is ready to come in and talk about a big event down in Carlsbad soon. But before you guys get out of here, Ann, I wanted to ask you, for those that don't know or are not really familiar what, just what does the lieutenant governor do? What are, what are your main responsibilities as lieutenant governor when you get elected? Sure. So, so when we get elected, uh, the, the, gov the lieutenant governor has two constitutional roles. The first, first role is to serve as the president of the Senate. And so, uh, so from the executive branch, I'm the only executive officer that actually works with the legislature on the Senate side. And, um, and, and, and last year, at the, during the 2021 legislature, I served as an analyst for that uh, for the Senate, and I actually got to analyze the bills and help them and summarize them so that the legislatures would have an idea as to whether or not, if they're Republican, whether or not they wanted to pass it or not. Um, there were a lot of bad bills coming through. And so, essentially, so I got to see how they made the sausage. So as, as Lieutenant Governor, uh, as the President of the Senate, I preside over the entire Senate, represent the entire state, and, uh, and, and that's like one of the key roles. The second, the second primary role is to serve as the ombuds for the state. Now the ombuds is the liaison between the state agencies and the public. So if you're having an issue with a particular state agency and you're not getting the issue resolved, you can actually contact the lieutenant governor as as the ombuds. Um, actually, I was. Uh, this is one of the reasons I think I, I won my primary pretty handily is because I've actually been trained as an ombuds. I've uh, after I left Sandia, I worked for another company called University Space Research Association for five years, and the CEO asked me to become the corporate ombuds for them as well. I was the corporate director of strategy, but I was also their corporate ombuds. So I had to go get trained. It's an actual uh, profession. And essentially, it trains you on how to do alternative uh, dispute resolution. And so I know how to basically bring parties together, work through the issues, and then get some kind of resolution. So you, you serve as a coach, mentor sort of uh, role, but you can actually guide folks to, to get to a resolution on an issue that they're getting, uh, that hasn't been getting resolved. And the reason I did it for the corporation was because it was, it was a way for people to come bring problems and not have to go to HR. Because if you go to the human resources, you have to report. It becomes a, an official. They have to do an official investigation and it can, kind of gets blown out of proportion and sometimes most of these issues just was a communication issue and so you just need somebody there who could help them resolve those things so I actually have the uh, that and so those are the two constitutional roles and one of the things I hope to bring to the table because of my technical background is uh, I tell people I speak geek uh, and 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 because of my background and experience at Sandia National Labs I would love to move the technologies that are in Sandia, Los Alamos, Air Force Research Lab, the White Sands Missile Range, and move some of those technologies that they have been developing uh, and move them out into the real world and create some small high-tech jobs here in New Mexico. Uh, that would be sort of a, uh, an ambition of mine to make that happen because we have some of the best and brightest people on earth living in the state of New Mexico and we're not leveraging them properly. Yeah. So that's one of the things I'd love to be able to do. Well, let me ask you this. How do we turn the spaceport into something that's of real value? you as opposed to uh, Governor Richardson's folly. <laughs> I, I, I agree with that. I, I'm, I'm struggling with the spaceport because uh, it's kind of like, you know, if we build it, they will come, right? Well, yeah. they haven't come yet. And, yeah. and, I, and I want it to get, become self-sustaining. And so we need to, uh, and maybe I could be an ambassador in that regards to maybe try to recruit other firms like SpaceX to maybe come here because they're probably the most successful one at this point. Mm -hmm. I was very disappointed to see Virgin Galactic move their manufacturing uh, to Arizona and they're going to launch them from here. That doesn't make any sense to me. Why wouldn't you just manufacture them here in New Mexico? So what led to that decision? Is, I'm curious about it. So I, I, the spaceport is something that I'm struggling with because it's, it's something we have built and we've invested over $200 million into, and yet it's not paying for itself. Uh, and if I'm truly want to stick to my pr principles of free market, we ought to make sure it can stand on its own two feet, which means we've got to support it with the infrastructure, make sure the roads are there and all this, everything else. But it needs to be able to bring in uh, additional um, clients, if you will, to yeah. support that effort. Well, there's so much potential for it if, uh, if it does get realized, because I think the whole the Virgin Galactic thing was kind of cool. Right. 
but with everything else that's going on, is that what we need to be spending our money exactly. on right now? But if we can make it pay off, then it's... If it can pay for itself and be self-sustaining, I mean, why not, right? Yeah. Uh, like any other industry. That's right. And so... Um, well, but before we run out of uh, time, uh, make, make your sales pitch here. Why, you know, when people go in to vote, they're obviously they're going to see... Uh, uh, Mark at the top of the ticket, but your name's going to be right there. They're going to see uh, Michelle Lujan Grisham, and there's a lot of people that if you asked them who's our current lieutenant governor, and he's a nice guy. <laughs> he's, he's a great no guy. No one knows. But no one knows. Right. Uh, but uh, m make your pitch here. Why, uh, why should folks uh, consider you and Mark for governor and lieutenant governor in, in November? Well, I think the the key thing I want to remind people of is that our current governor has been there for four years, and and in that time we've lost 40 percent of our small businesses in in New Mexico. Those, they are not coming back. Yeah. Many have left because of our COVID mandates. Uh, the second thing that I'm concerned about is we are now ranked 51st in the nation in education. Um, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, you heard me right. 51st. Uh, <laughs> We're behind the District of Columbia. <laughs> And so, uh, so, so we cannot go any lower, and uh, and and so that's a well. Actually, if if my New Mexit plans come through and we form our own state, <laughs> then New Mexico would drop to fifty-two. Yeah, and so so it is possible. Uh, but but that's so too bad. when you look at when you look at just sort of the uh, and then the fact that uh, the the mandates and during and I understand the first couple of weeks or even the first couple of months during COVID we were all. Um, not really sure how, how this was going to affect people and so but she maintained the, the, the mandates uh, for over a year and that hurt and, and hurt our, our kids as well because and there's no plan that I see for her to uh, recoup especially the impact it has had on, on kids uh, there to recoup the time that they've lost in their education because you're not going to have uh, you know third graders and fourth graders doing zoom uh, that's just not going to work yeah. and so they're behind now and they're going to either be behind the rest of their lives, which is going to impact their ability to, you know, be productive citizens down the line, unless we do something to, to recover them and get them back up to speed. So we have a lot of serious problems in the state, and, and, I, and it's it's funny that people would would have a problem voting for Republicans at this point because they've had, we've had 90 plus years of Democrat control of the state in the legislature. And uh, so everything that the state is, we're last on everything uh, good and we're first on everything bad, then you you got to say it's all Democrats. And and if you really want to change, if you really want to see the state move in a good direction, if you want to see the state prosper, uh, try picking a new leadership. And I think if we get in power, we're going to turn the state around and we're going to turn the ship in the right direction. And that's what I'm excited about. Ant Thornton running for lieutenant governor with Mark Ronchetti. Nice to meet you. Thank you Hope very much. Hope to have you back again. Glenna, nice to meet you Thank too. Thank you, dear. Appreciate it. Sila, are you going to be here Friday? Yeah, who are you bringing with you on Friday? Audrey Trujillo. Audrey Trujillo, Secretary of State, Secretary of State candidate yep. on the Republican side, I That's believe. Right. So That's looking right. forward to it. All right. Well, can thanks you, a lot. Good luck to you. Can you tell everybody to meet, come? Uh, they can donate to our website on the www.thenextlg.com because that's what I intend to be, the next lieutenant governor. The next LG.com. And that's we're not correct. talking about your TV. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Very good. That good. Which they make nice TVs, by the yeah, way. They yeah, they do. <laughs> Thank you, guys. All Appreciate right, thanks it. A lot. Appreciate it. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. Our next